Welcome back to the Hacktivity, everybody. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Summer. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. This is Rave Hackers, and it is dedicated to everything about festival culture, EDM, raves, things like that. And this week, I'm actually really excited. This is a topic that I have briefly touched on, um, but it is something that I haven't really ever shared the whole story with, so I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Um, and like I said, this week, I'm really excited. This is a story that I haven't actually ever shared on my channel. A lot of people don't actually know the background as to why I started Rave Hackers and kind of what led to those final steps. So I'm really excited to be sharing those with you guys. Um, I have briefly mentioned this in the past. I'll put the video up here if you're looking for it. Um, but this was kind of generally covered in my festival firsts. Um, video that I did the rave culture challenge a couple weeks ago um, like I said I'll put it up here for you guys it'll be a link um, but make sure that you check that out if you're looking for just like a little bit more about me and my festival first okay so I want to go ahead and just dive right in I do have a lot to talk about in this story so I do want to just get going if you see me looking down it's just because I have my iPad down here and I took like some notes because I wanted to make sure that I shared everything with you guys um, but obviously, like I said, I've answered this question before, um, but I want to talk about basically what made me start Rave Hackers and also talk about my very first festival experience. Um, I feel like a lot of people, when they go to their first festival, they have like this really amazing story and like, don't get me wrong, my first festival was amazing. Like, obviously I loved it because I have gone back to Bonnaroo every year since then, um, but it definitely was not a situation that was super awesome living through it. I learned a lot and like I said, Bonnaroo year one was kind of what inspired me to start Rave Hackers. So I'm really excited to share this story with you guys. Um, I will go ahead and say a lot of shit happens in this video. So if you haven't yet, grab your drinks. I'm gonna run downstairs and grab a Red Bull so that we can chat about this because my local grocery store is actually out of White Claws, which is disappointing, um, but I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my drink, grab my iPad, and we can get this road show going. Okay, so like I previously mentioned, first festival, Bonnaroo 2017, I'll put the lineup over here for you guys, truly was a banger year. Um, let me just kind of like set the stage for you guys on what, what we're getting into. Okay, so this was the end, the, the beginning of 2017. At this point, when I decided to go to Bonner, I had been to one kind of festival. It was based after New Year's, so obviously no camping. Um, I stayed in a hotel, and like I didn't like I didn't really do anything. Like we showed up probably an hour and a half into the event, and we like sat up in the bleachers, and it was really fun, like amazing time. But like. Definitely not the same experience as going to a festival or even being like really down low. So there's that. Um, decided after going to Bass Nectar New Year's and two single night events at a small venue that my friends and I were going to go to Bonnaroo. And it was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. Our friend Carlos, who kind of, I would say I really credit him helping us get into festivals and raves. Shout out, Los, you are amazing. Um, but basically he invited us to go with his group and we were like, um, yeah, like definitely, absolutely, like we wanna go. So we bought our tickets in April, May of that year. Maybe a little sooner, maybe like March, April, May around that time. It definitely was not um, like long before the festival though. So as we're like continuing to like build up hype about Bonnaroo, we're also telling all of our like sorority sisters and our friends that we're going to Bonnaroo and that we're like really excited. And so of course we started amassing like this group of people, right? And so I think eventually we ended up having like 10 of us, 10 or 15 of us that went. Um, and I would say almost all of us except maybe one or two of us had ever been to a festival ever, ever. So if that doesn't kind of like clearly set the stage and like sprinkle some seeds of doubt within you guys, I really don't know what's going to. Um, but that's just truly, truly just where it begins. Okay, so it's time to buy tickets, right? 
you get that awesome deal if you buy it through an ambassador you're helping out an ambassador so that's what we decided to do we bought tickets through our friend eli um and like obviously i definitely recommend buying through ambassadors like the problem that we had which I will get more into here in a second, was definitely like a one-off thing. Like I have literally never heard of anybody else going through what we went through. So I will just like say that as like a disclaimer, this is not like a common experience by any means. Um, so basically bought our tickets and something went wrong in the system. Um, I can't remember because it's been a couple years if we already had, like if we had two accounts and we were only searching under like our old account, or if we had put our tickets under our friend Carlos's name and we just didn't realize it and I think that's what we ended up doing um, but basically we started checking for our tickets and we couldn't find them like they weren't showing up we couldn't find our order um, and so we all naturally just started panicking like we had bought four in a group so we were waiting for like the free car camping pass and all of that at this point I had basically already graduated so I told my friends I was like listen like I'll figure it out so at this point basically I was just like calling the Bonnaroo line constantly I was calling front gate constantly I was literally just like calling anybody and at this point I was living by myself and I didn't have any friends where I moved in Indiana at that point so I was like whatever like I'll sit on the phone all damn day like it really did not matter to me like in any way so basically ended up finally getting a hold of a Bonnaroo ambassador and his name was Andrew I'll never forget it I literally blew this guy up like he was so unbelievably nice gave me a cell phone number and like I would text him all the time because he basically assured that like we were going to make it to Bonnaroo that year so sorry my like dog is over here so I like, keep looking at him because he's doing things he should not be doing so once we were able to find the tickets, we felt a lot better about it. Um, we were having them shipped to my friend's house because I was going to be meeting them to get together and travel together. So um, that's kind of where that ended up. We got the tickets shipped out. It was no problem, but it did take me, I would say, probably like three or four days actually no it was longer than that it was probably at least a week and a half before we were able to finally figure out like what had happened to our tickets and then find our old tickets and make sure that they were actually going to like make it to us in general all right so the long awaited day has come bonnaroo tickets are finally shipping out we are unbelievably excited like i previously mentioned i had them shipped to my friend's house in virginia because i was going to be meeting them after like to connect before the event and drive down together um so basically we get our passes and it's missing our camping pass we had several tickets that were in there all of our like festival tickets were there but the tickets that were supposed to be free and added into our basket were not there um so then we're thinking to ourselves like fuck like what are we going to do at this point right and so once again i call up my friend andrew ring a ding ding thanks bro um and i'm like basically like our car camping pass is missing it wasn't in our thing our shipping was showing that it was supposed to be in our thing and it most definitely was not in our thing so long story short they ended up having to ship out our camping passes separately because there had been a mix-up i believe with putting them actually into the orders that qualified for free shipping, free um, parking tickets. So that was another thing. So not only did we manage to lose our tickets the first time, which is just great, but then we also did not get our camping passes. So um, as you can see, this is really shaping out to be a very positive experience just right off the bat, right? And so I'm thinking to myself, like how much worse can it be? Like we managed to find our tickets, we managed to find our car camping passes, like we, we can do it all, right? um this is where shit just begins let me tell you okay so we are getting in line we have all of our stuff packed we broke our cooler trying to put our frozen ice in it um our nitrogen liquid nitrogen or blocks of nitrogen whatever they are i can't even remember anymore um and we're on the road right so we're driving we're driving we don't have any issues i don't think any of our friends got pulled over that year which was really good we were all really paranoid about just like 
them coming through and just tossing all of our stuff out onto the sides of the road because we had actually seen quite a few people along the way who had gotten their things tossed so you know r.i.p to you guys but um glad it was you and not us <laughs> sorry um so we get in line and we were in line for probably about 12 to 16 hours our first year just like waiting on the side of the road i don't really know what happened like if we just got into the wrong line or what but we were in line forever so we basically get through and it's like 7 a.m the next day like the first day of the festival thursday and we're setting up our campsite and it is freezing freezing now keep in mind as i was preparing for this event i was thinking it's going to be so unbelievably hot like i'm not even gonna need pajamas guess what bitch did not bring pajamas this bitch so it's freezing and that's just setting the stage for just a multitude of shit shows so i have no pants it's freezing freezing okay and like thank god at this point that like my boyfriend chance had thought to buy a tent because i would not have even thought like oh like we need a tent like it literally never even crossed my mind like he just thank god had bought a tent like thank god <laughs> this is all i've got to say um so basically we start trying to set up our tent we had never set it up prior to showing up to bonnaroo which was a mistake i always recommend setting up your tent before you show up to the festival because it took us probably an hour to get this six person tent put up like okay okay we have a tent now only to realize that we did not bring any blankets we did not bring anything to put on an air mattress i do believe that we brought pillows i think i'm not really sure i can't remember um so at the end of all of this we ended up with an air mattress with a hole in it that deflated every night constantly so we basically were sleeping on the ground and then the only blanket that we were able to salvage and find was our fitted sheet that was it that's what we slept on for four days at our first bonnaroo music festival so it was just it was going great at this point right so we're basically roughing it and we're moving into day one basically like like the festival hasn't even happened yet like that's where we're at at this point so like i feel like we just need to pause here for a second and just let you take in everything that's happened at this point because like we basically like the festival hasn't even started yet like we have run into all of these roadblocks and like the music hasn't even like they haven't even turned it on yet they haven't even turned it on so here we go we're diving into the next kind of round of shit shows day one comes and goes there's not really anything that's like super crazy about day one um i would say that we were all really enjoying running around and meeting everybody um it was just a day for us to all really explore like we found the grove we went in under the arch um i mean it was a really amazing day like i got one of my favorite pictures of me and chance i'll drop that over here for you guys um and that's actually like a really great like memory like we were trying to like take like a selfie and it just wasn't turning out and this really nice person came up to us and was like no 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 like this is a memory that like you guys want to remember like let me get a good picture of you guys and that's what this one is and i look at it all the time it's one of my favorites um so yeah day one was not bad like i didn't bring the right pair of shoes once again was not prepared for this festival like i thought i was ready but i very clearly was not like i did not bring a good pair of flip-flops i did not bring a good pair of tennis shoes i did not even bring a pair of comfy shoes like that's just like where my head was at at this point right um so we're going into day two and everything is more or less fine at this point like everybody's kind of off doing their own things and experiencing different things and we're good like day two kind of goes by there's not really any hiccups at least none that like i personally remember um however we're going into the evening of day three and that's when things start to go a little haywire if you will 
we're going into the evening of day three and at this point i need to preface that like my boyfriend and i have not really been hanging out with like our friends that much we were kind of bopping around to the other sets and shows that we were really enjoying and we mostly were at the other stage um but we just kind of wanted to do our own thing we did not want to be trying to like make decisions or anything so we were really go with the flow um and we got back to our campsite later the night of the third night and found out that like one of our friends had had a medical emergency um it was just a scary experience that we had and after that it kind of woke everybody up i think going into the final day so saturday um that's when things were really starting to like massively go downhill for me and chance so at the time him well he was not feeling good like at first we thought it was just because he wasn't eating enough like we had brought food that we thought we would want while we were there and we were going to just like cook a lot of food and we didn't like we literally just ended up eating like festival food and we thought that that was the problem that like he just wasn't getting enough nutrients so we wake up we get out of the tent and at this point he's telling me that he's lightheaded he doesn't like feel very good he's thrown up at this point and like i'm worried because i don't know what's going on and so i'm like okay like we'll just take it really easy like we'll go into the like venue and we'll just like find some shade and we'll literally just like sit under the shade all day um literally we could not even get like we couldn't even get to the grove so at this point he can't keep anything down he can barely stay awake for like 20 30 minutes at a time and i'm not feeling this bad yet i'm just kind of like lethargic and tired like i kind of just assumed that like i had overdone my body um so i was taking it easy but like he just was not doing well um so i basically made the executive decision at that point that like him and i needed to go home it just like was not healthy for us to stay at bonnaroo anymore um looking back on it i wish we had gone to the med tents so that we could have gotten like better before we decided to drive home because i think driving home is probably the biggest mistake that i made in this whole scheme of things we basically had decided that it was time to go like we did not stay for any of the evening shows on sunday like i felt so bad for pulling my friends away who had driven down with us but like it was becoming like a medical emergency at this point well, we get back to the campsite sunday on sunday and i start putting everything away i start packing up our tent i start packing up all of our food i start packing up our car and i'm like in the process of like turning our car on so that i can get the ac going so that i can get chance out of the heat and my fucking car is dead yeah like i don't know what happened i don't know if i left the keys on i don't know if my friends had left the keys on but my car was dead i couldn't get it to turn over i couldn't get it to turn on like it was fucking dead so i'm thinking okay like now not only do i need to figure out how to like take care of my sick boyfriend but i have to go find somebody who has jumper cables and have them jump my car basically so i'm running around the festival grounds at this point and in like the middle of the day on sunday and i'm asking like any stranger that i can find like do you have jumper cables like do you have jumper cables like do you have jumper cables and it surprisingly took me a really long time to find somebody who had jumper cables I highly, highly recommend having jumper cables. I have a whole video. I will put it up here for you guys. All of the essentials that I recommend having I made after this festival because these are all of the things that we did not have that I wish we'd fucking had. So basically my car is dead. I finally find some nice, generous soul that is able to help me jump my car and well actually they didn't even help me jump my car like they just gave me the jumper cables so i run back to my car i get my friend meg's car pull it around so that like i can jump my car with it and 
get the car going get it running and start like taking everything back down again packing it all back up getting it into my back seat and like rounding my friends up at this point um so we finally get on the road we leave Bonnaroo early and we drive probably the 20 hours back well it was about 18 hours i think back to morgantown west virginia which is where we were dropping my friends off um looking back on it we should not have left we should not have left we should have stayed in morgantown we should have slept it off at my friend amy's house and we did not we continued to drive back to nova and basically ended up totaling my dad's car i was so sick that i reacted slowly to a couple of deer running across the road and i ended up taking my car straight through a um big metal guardrail basically um sorry it like gets me going every time i start thinking about it and um basically totaled the shit out of my car yeah um, I'll put a picture of it over here. It was the worst accident that I've ever been in and it was in Pawpaw, West Virginia. If you don't know where that is, it is literally the middle of nowhere. There is no cell phone service. There are basically no people. Um, it is like a road that you literally drive through out in the boonies of West Virginia. And my car was totaled. I had no cell phone service and me and my boyfriend were basically so dehydrated that we couldn't function. Like could things literally get any like get any worse right so basically i end up having to flag somebody down on the side of the road who luckily saw my car and decided to be a really nice civilian and stop and let me use their phone to call the police i also called my dad to let him know that i had totaled his car um and that's just where things kept building um my friends didn't have room for us to take us back to Virginia with them when they drove through Pawpaw. Um, so we basically had to catch a ride from somebody who was in Morgantown, have them drive us all the way to Nova, emptied our bank accounts to do so. And I actually had to fly home a couple days later because I was leaving for Costa Rica in like a couple days. Yeah. So that is how everything panned out i came back from bonnaroo i got so unbelievably dehydrated that i couldn't move for three days i couldn't keep down any solid foods i basically drank gatorade and watermelon for four days um and sat in a really hot bathtub when i couldn't do anything else i just want to preface that like this is exactly what can happen to you if you don't take care of yourself and if you are not prepared for these events festivals are unbelievably fun and they are without a doubt the place that you can go and be carefree and just like let loose but like you need to be willing to take care of yourself and you need to be prepared for those events there are very few times when i look back in my life and i think like fuck like that was so stupid like i am very much a person that is like live and let live like I do not dwell on my past and that is probably one of the few things that like if I could go back and change like I would 150% have changed everything that I did during that whole experience. So I hope that you guys learned something from this. I hope that you enjoyed my little story time. Um, like I said, I hadn't shared this story with you guys and I felt like it was one that everybody would at least want to hear. So thank you for sticking around to the end. I feel like this was kind of a long one. Um, if you did enjoy this video and you want to know more about me, more about my experience in festivals, please drop those questions below. I am definitely thinking about doing a big Q&A, but um, I obviously don't want to take the time to film it if I don't have any questions that you guys are going to ask me. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a call it spring and have you guys like just submit your questions over there. I feel like people get really awkward when they're like, oh, well, like, what if they see that it's like me asking this question? I don't care either way. Um, I just want some questions to answer. So I will get all of that up and running for you guys. I'll put the link down below. Um, and as always, if you haven't yet, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me what you don't want to see. Tell me what festivals you're excited about that haven't canceled yet. But yeah, that is my tea for the day. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week.